Well, good morning. Uh, I hope that uh, your uh, morning is going well, that you're waking up and stirring around. And uh, I just want to say it is good to be uh, back uh, in live service today. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, were out of service last week because of a plumbing uh, issue that we had. And, uh, and it's behind us, thank God, that uh, the plumbing is fixed and we're gonna have in-person services today. So that's, that's good. Uh, it's funny, or maybe it's not funny, how um, we take things for granted like uh, plumbing <laughs> until uh, it, it isn't working. Uh, and then, you know, it makes us so glad for those things that you know we may have taken for granted before. So I'm thankful for plumbing today. And uh, so again, it's January the 24th. Uh, welcome to Pastor's Choice. I, uh, I just like this time because it just gives me a uh, time to just share some things from my heart that uh, typically I may not have time to do through the week with the church body and whoever might want to listen. But um, so uh, I, I love this time. And so uh, whenever you watch this, I just appreciate uh, you tuning in. Um, today, I want to uh, begin this morning uh, with just a, a tr an update on Marcia Turner and uh, had a conversation with her uh, last night. And it's just so good to hear from Marcia. Uh, she stays pretty busy with everything that she's got going on. But Marcia, of course, was diagnosed with leukemia and then it changed course and became more aggressive. And so uh, she's pretty sick uh, a few months ago. And uh, anyway, there's been a lot of good news uh, with, uh, with Marsha's condition. And so, and, and there's a lot of good things on the horizon, but it's going to be quite a little bit of process to get there. Uh, and God is good and Marsha's just giving him the praise. But so, so she's going in for an MRI on her back. That's really the only thing that she's having any problems with right now, which is great. And then next Friday, she will start six, uh, six days of chemo. And, uh, and that's going to be preparing her body for the uh, stem cell transfusion, the bone marrow transfusion from, uh, thank God that her brother was just like a perfect match for her. And so David is doing his part and he uh, is donating. And uh, so I'm so thankful for uh, uh, that. Uh, but she's going to, once she starts that, uh, listen guys, it takes a hundred days basically, or three and a half months to run this process, run this course. And so uh, she's in it for long haul. And, uh, and so February 4th, uh, she will begin the blood transfusion. And now there's a lot of great news in there, but I'd like for us today, because we know that doctors, uh, they do procedures, but God is our healer. And, uh, and, but on the other hand, we want to be very thankful and appreciative of those doctors and nurses and teams of staff that, that help us, that help us in those things. And so anyway, uh, I'd like for you to pray for Marcia and continue to over this next, uh, several months of this process. And we're just believing that God is going to totally heal her from leukemia, that she's going to be completely 100% whole from this. And, uh, man, she's got a great attitude. She was telling me, she said, uh, the, uh, some of the team members came in there to visit where they're and they said, man, you're excellent. You're doing everything that we've asked you to do. She said, I want to live. <laughs> and I thought, man, that's great because we should want to live. Uh, whether we have leukemia or not, I mean, we should really want to live. We should want to live the abundant life that God has given us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and through his broken body, through his shed blood. Man, we can live uh, in abundant life. And, and it's his joy that we do that. And so uh, I love Marsha's attitude in this. And uh, she just wants everyone to know that, man, she, is, uh, she's, she just wants prayer. She just wants people lifting her up because she knows that's really where the power of, of everything is, is in that, uh, in that prayer time, in that. And so uh, another thing, uh, just, uh, you know, and there's, there's just pray for Cindy. She has... Uh, you know, just, you know, she's put everything else on hold and, uh, as, and serving Marsha, that's what she's doing. She's, you know, 
Uh, she's there for everything. She's running her back and forth to Kansas City, which pray for protection and they're traveling. And, uh, and then pretty soon they're going to really just make a move up there. They'll be staying up there. So just pray that God will work out all the details. Give Cindy good energy uh, through all this, that the Holy Spirit will just quicken her mortal body with life. Uh, and so we're just grateful that we have an opportunity. We not, may not be able to be there physically, but we can partner with them in prayer. And of course, that's what they really need in this day, in this hour. Uh, so this morning, as we as we begin in prayer, we're going to pray for Marcia, of course. And uh, I just want to continue. We started off well. We're going to pray for our nation, the leadership of this nation. We're going to pray for the church worldwide that uh, that we uh, revive and stay in revival, that we are refreshed and moving. And I want to pray for the local body of believers here, community. Uh, that we will also, you know, be right in the middle and doing the will of God for our lives. And so well, let's pray for the, uh, the, the family here, the community, at community. And, uh, and we just really want the moving of the Holy Spirit in, in, in our lives. And, and I want to say this too. I want to pray today that we'll, the, the people that we are ministering to and the people maybe that are lost, that God has called us to minister to, uh, that we just that we rely upon the fact that it's not us doing this. The Holy Spirit is at work in the things that we say, the things we do, and how we love them, how we approach them. But the Holy Spirit is moving in their lives as well as ours to bring forth fruit and uh, fruit of salvation, fruit of healing, uh, fruit uh, of, of uh, procurement of the promises of God. Uh, all of those things that that the Holy Spirit is in work in that, and so if we turn our faith that way, then listen, our faith isn't in us; it's in it's in God, and it's in the moving of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, man, let's just pray. Uh, let's let's pray together, Father. We want to thank you today, God, for uh, the good news of Christ Jesus, the good news of the gospel that that Jesus, you are our healer. You came so that you you could break and allow your body to be broken for us so that we could have healing. With your stripes, Lord, we are made whole and complete. And so, Father, those who are watching this morning who are sick in body, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would, by your spirit, God, bring forth healing. Uh, Lord, bring forth not only healing in our physical bodies, but, God, in our emotions, God, there are people that just need so much emotional healing right now, God, and I pray for that, God, that you will just heal us emotionally, God, mentally, Father God, that you bring us to good mental health, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. And so we just lift up Marcia to you, and God, we just pray over this long uh, haul of, of this process, God, that you are in the midst of that, working every detail out, giving Marcia, Father, what she needs. And God, thank you, Lord, that her attitude is good, Lord, that she wants to live. And God, I know that you'll bless that, and you'll bless Cindy for her part in that. God, and we pray for our nation today, God, that heal the division and the healing will not come through political viewpoints, God, but we know it will come through a relationship with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And so, God, I pray. God, and I ask you, Lord, just to help our nation in this hour, God, and I join with other believers this morning, just praying for our nation, God, forgive us of being selfish and, and forgive us of, Lord, uh, those places where we fail, Lord, and cause us to rise up, Father, as, as the church worldwide, God, help us to serve one another in love, God, help us to believe in your promises and receive your promises, God. I pray for the, the, the body of believers here, community, God, that we will, Father, allow the Holy Spirit, submit to the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and, Lord, those lives of those people who we are ministering to, God, that you will, by your Spirit, work in their lives as well to bring forth a wonderful, refreshing time of revival, God. We're just praying for that. We're seeking you for that, God. And we pray over the day. God, just let it be a wonderful day, God, of, uh, of service, Lord God, of, of uh, just refreshing in your presence, Lord, as the people gather either online today or they gather in person, God, let it be that you would just by your spirit pour out upon all today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, well, I tell you what, you know, I mentioned the plumbing problem we had last week and it was a weird deal. It's a strange deal that uh, 
happened, uh, you know, I, I suppose as a kid, you know, filled our standpipe up a couple months ago with rocks and we got that undone, but I guess some of those rocks washed down and caused a problem farther on down in the pipes. And uh, anyway, uh, everything was backed up. I mean, totally everything was backed up. And there was a point last week, you know, when I was just, you know, racking my mind, uh, trying to figure out, you know, how do we fix this? Because it was so far away that really no plumbers, nothing for rent that could really take care of this problem. And, uh, and, and I was thinking about that because what was coming into our system wasn't going anywhere. So there was a limit to the amount of things or the amount of stuff that could go into our system without problems. And, and in fact, that's how we found the problem. Uh, one of our toilets decided it would be a good day for the float to stick and it began to uh, flow in, but, but it couldn't go anywhere. So it overflowed and we caught the water. Thank God fairly early on wasn't a big deal to clean up. But, and so more water was coming in, listen, that was going out and then leaving our system and it became a major issue. And in fact, the problem became toxic as the sewer backed up and overflowed. And, and, and when I thought about that, just out of my mouth, out of the, my mouth said this, I just said, oh God, I hope this isn't an, an indictment against our church. I hope that doesn't represent where we were at. Something caused my spirit to, to, to realize that there was a principle at work here and that I did not want this to be uh, an indictment on our church or a statement about our church of everything flowing in and nothing flowing out. Because I knew that if that was the case, if, if, if this was, a, if this was uh, you know, a picture of how our church was operating, I thought, my goodness, we, we're gonna become toxic before long if we aren't allowing those things to flow out. And so I thought about that and I kept thinking about the flow of the things of God that are coming into us. And Jesus said this in John 7, 37, starting there. It says, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit who those believing would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, as I understand it at the Feast of the Tabernacles, for seven days, the priest would go down uh, to the Pool of Siloam. I've heard some say the Brook Kidron, and, and they would draw pitchers of water uh, out and they would carry those pitchers in a big procession uh, back to the Temple Mount and they would pour them out as a reminder that God uh, uh, gave them water from a rock. And you know, in the Feast of Tabernacles was those where they make those little booths where they could see out in the night sky and remember that all the things that God had done, bringing them through the captivity and out of the captivity from Egypt to into the, the promised land. So they would do that for seven days. And, and, and they would also, when they poured that water out, would also remind them it gave them a, a water out of the rock and one day, that he would pour out water on their souls from the promised Messiah. But on that last day, the eighth day, the great day of the feast, uh, they would not make this procession uh, and not pour out water because in that they would signify that God had led them to the promised land and give them the land of, that he promised them. So you know, on this day, Jesus was the Messiah standing right there in their midst and he was getting ready to pour out the water of the Holy Spirit upon humanity. And it's very significant that Jesus said this at this time. And that's why on that last day of the feast, man, what was he talking about? He was talking about the flow of the things of God, how the spirit was going to flow into us and those rivers of living water were going to flow out of us. And, and so, you know, so what ought to get our attention at this, that out of our heart shall flow rivers of living water, not trickles, not pools, but rivers of living water. 
And when rivers flow, man, they bring life. Uh, every place that a river goes, you know, so many times in the scripture, it talks about, you know, different things like, you're like a tree planted by streams of living water and, and, and those sort of things because water is so significant in, in um, the, the things of God and the pictures of the things of God and the moving of the Holy Spirit. And so we are given to us rivers of living water so that our lives can pour into the lives of others. Now, if we don't give out from the inflow, catch this this morning, then at some point, we're gonna to become toxic. If we're just always receiving and um, something stops the flow of the water of the Holy Spirit from our lives, listen, will become toxic. And, and you know, over the years, um, I think probably you serve the Lord long enough, you, you come to these points where you have to realize that, uh, listen, I've, I've got a lot flowing in, but is it going out? Or, you know, maybe uh, you just realize, hey, it's not flowing out. Uh, you know, I'm more concerned about what I'm getting than, uh, than what I'm giving out. And that's the real problem. If we don't give out from the inflow, then we'll become toxic at some point because generally what happens in that process is we become dissatisfied or discontent or maybe even bitter, uh, you know, almost easily, everything offends us. And, and, and that's a real indicator that the Holy Spirit that's flowing into us doesn't have a channel to flow out of. And that's where a lot of our problems come. That's where a lot of toxicity comes from. Just like when our sewer backed up, it would be toxic, see, if we hadn't fixed that problem. And so it, only if what is given, listen to this, only if what is given is poured back out can more flow into us. There cannot be more added to a system than doesn't flow out of it. And that's your system of receiving the things from God and allowing those things to flow out of you it's, it's that same principle. It, it's, we must um, allow the things of the Spirit not only to get to us, but to get through us. And, and so as, as I thought about that, that deal with the sewer, and I thought, man, don't let this be an indictment against uh, us here at community. We need to understand this. And I, I'm concerned that we realize this because um, with all the problems that you face individually, <clears throat> and, and, and again, some of those as a group corporately or uh, wherever you may be meeting at, whichever body of believers you may uh, be a part of, um, listen, uh, it's awful easy to get concerned with taking care of yourself. And, and, and there's, there's, no, there's no sin in taking care of those things that you need, but God has promised you more than enough. Because the rivers of living water are good as it washes through you, but not so good if it just gets to you. And so I, I wanna remind us, because I'm concerned that we realize this and make sure we don't stop the flow of the Holy Spirit by coming intake only. We must let it flow through us if we're really to be truly alive and active for the kingdom of God. See, we'll only truly be alive and active as we pour out. Uh, a few weeks ago, while Kim was ministering on Wednesday night, she talked about a time when God spoke to her and asked what she was going to be doing with all that she'd been given. And he basically said to her that she had plenty for her. How much more did she need? She had plenty. And then what are you going to do with what you've been given? And oftentimes when we zero in on us and we just really begin to think about us, um, that, that outflow diminishes and stops. And, and then we, we've got so much to give, folks. I, I know that you may be in a situation this morning where you don't think that you have a lot to give, but I promise you, you have more to give than you can even know. And, and, and I really, I, you know, and, I, and, and through COVID, you know, I, I've watched as people struggle um, with that because, you know, uh, for a lot of people, church attendance isn't really happening for them right now, at least in person, because they're, you know, they're being protective. But but yet, um, 
I believe that mindset sometimes, if we, if we get disconnected from the body of believers, we can forget that we need to be pouring out instead of God just meeting our needs, get us through this. And listen, hey, he's gonna get us through this, we're gonna come through this. And so many testimonies I've heard of people coming through this greater than they ever thought they would and, and more blessed than they thought they would. But, but we need to get this. And so what are you going to uh, do with what you've been given? Do you have rivers of living water flowing out of you? Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. That's what Jesus said. That's, Jesus said that about you. And he said that about me, that we would have these rivers of living water flowing out of us. Not bottling it up, not laying it back so we'll have it for need some other day, but flowing out of us. It's a free flow. And, uh, you know, if you... Uh, if you, if you quit that flow, listen, sooner or later, you'll become toxic. Uh, let's think about the Dead Sea for a minute. The Dead Sea receives water from the Jordan River, right? But it doesn't send anything out. It takes, but it doesn't give. And the result is death and barrenness. And the same happens for our lives. And if you only think for yourself, if you only take but never give to others, your life becomes as lifeless as the Dead Sea. Wow. Uh, so I want to pray this morning that we'll allow the flow of the Holy Spirit to flow through us. Uh, but even more that uh, <laughs> just more and more, I suppose, uh, is what I'm trying to, to say is that he'll flow through us just more and more that we'll be those conduits of not a trickle of the Spirit of God, but the flow, a free flow of a river of water uh, through um, through God's spirit to those who have received his great and precious promises. And, uh, and, and to do that, we must be willing to submit and be willing to allow him to flow through our lives. See, there's, there's a submission that you and I have to have. And, and in some part of that, we have to say, Lord, I understand that it's not just about me getting enough, but it's about me becoming um, a flow of the Holy Spirit out into the lives of others because that's where real life comes from. So I hope your desire is for this. And so this morning, I just want to partner with you in faith uh, to see God move this way in a mighty fashion in our lives. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this uh, short time we've had this morning of just your word coming forth. And Jesus, you said we have these rivers of living water flowing out of us, flowing into us, flowing out of us. And so God, out of our heart, Father, we desire. I partner with those in faith right now. Some of us may be speaking in faith. I desire to be a person who flows out of living water into the lives of others. We desire, God, that. And Father, I pray for those, Lord, that may today realize that, you know, I just haven't been pouring anything out. And, and, I, and I realize there's been toxicity that's been happening in my life. And God, right now, I just, uh, I say enough of that, Lord. I repent from that and I just move towards that flow, God. So heal me of any bitterness or discontent or anything of that sort of uh, form. And God, help me to uh, go on in faith, Lord, believing you for this flow, God, that we will be, Father, this light that flows from the throne of God into this world through the rivers of water in our lives. God, we thank you for it and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning in this morning. And we just uh, love you and just uh, hope the best uh, day possible for you today. And uh, just praise the Lord today. Worship him uh, for those rivers of living water that are not only poured out into your life, but you then are able to pour in the lives of others. So God bless.